In African countries, poor living conditions are endemic, and diseases such as malaria, diabetes, and TB are widespread. Healthcare facilities are generally under-resourced and often decrepit. And yet, so far, the continent has avoided the worst of the pandemic. There were fears that living conditions in urban communities in South Africa and beyond would accelerate the spread of the virus. But some experts are now asking, what if those same crowded conditions also offer some extra protection against COVID-19? Some scientists thought a youthful population might be behind Africa's relatively low infection rates. But as the pandemic continues, analysts are more and more reluctant to put the continent's successes down to demographics. Some researchers have also hypothesized that the presence of certain parasites in the body are contributing to higher survival rates. But they're still trying to unravel the mystery. Africa has recorded a little over 1.4 million cases of coronavirus. That's less than a quarter figure of the figure for the United States alone. Almost half of the continent's confirmed cases were in South Africa. But even there, the death rate is surprisingly low. And the country's scientists are pushing to find a vaccine. The search for a life-saving COVID-19 vaccine is back on in Johannesburg. OK. Any, any questions? No. Does that sound OK? Yes. Today we'll also get you to sign um, the amendment to make sure that you understand um, that we've actually discussed uh, the study pause um, and the reviews and that the study has started again. OK. okay? Oxford University partnered with South African vaccinology experts in June to begin producing a locally effective serum to vaccinate against the coronavirus, which was halted when a sister trial in the United Kingdom saw a participant take ill. Thank you. Um, thank you. You can put your glass back on. I'm just going to... Yeah, when I heard that someone was sick in England, I was worried because I didn't know what to think because we were told about the risks involved with this uh, vaccination trial. But after a few days, I understood what it was about and I'm happy to continue with the, with the trial. I didn't even notice it the first day. Oh, really? Okay. The efforts form part of emergency measures to deal with the coronavirus pandemic in the world's most unequal society. It's very important for us to know that these vaccines are, are both safe and effective in a South African population who may differ greatly from, from populations in, in other parts of the world. South Africa, much like the rest of the continent, has not experienced the COVID-19 death rates seen in parts of the developed world. This has baffled some experts as to how a country with poor living conditions, a high burden of diabetes, tuberculosis and HIV AIDS was not overwhelmed by the pandemic. South Africa has a much younger population than many European countries and younger people are less severely affected than older people. In addition, about 40% of those young people, we estimate, had asymptomatic infection and that might be because they've been exposed to other coronaviruses that caused the common cold earlier on. As, as African traditional medicine uses... Uh, Indigenous communities have a simple hypothesis. Mm. Claiming South Africa weathered the COVID-19 storm through okay. the power of traditional medicine that is widely used throughout the country. For them, the search for a modern vaccine in Africa is futile and offensive. So we feel insulted that um, uh, people who come with methodologies from the West could come and land in our shores and want to think that we can just be vaccinated. It's problematic without recognizing the fact that the ancient systems of healing that exist and resonate in our, in our midst. Amid this opposition, the vaccine trial continues with fears a second wave of COVID-19 infections could arrive in coming months. We need to try and diminish um, the impact of COVID, both from a health point of view, but also from a socio-economic point of view. And that can actually only be done if we have a suitable vaccine going forward. Only a few months old, the vaccine trial is expected to run at least until the latter part of 2021. 
I'm really hopeful that by this time next year we'll have a vaccine available, the studies are going well, and we should be able to achieve it. With almost 16,000 deaths and over 650,000 infections in South Africa alone, for Dr. Fairley and her team, the arrival of a vaccine can't come soon enough. Well, coronavirus deaths across Africa are lower than scientists would have expected, especially when you consider there may have been many more cases than have so far been recorded. A number of reasons have been put forward for that, from Africa's young population to traditional medicines. But there is another more unusual hypothesis. Some scientists believe parasitic worms could be protecting some Africans from the full effects of COVID-19. On this, we can speak to Dr. Akim Herauf, who is a parasitologist at Bonn University. Thanks for joining us. Can you please tell us what this hypothesis is all about? Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, we have been working a long time on the immunology of uh, parasitic diseases and the host response, the human immune response, particularly against worms. And one of the uh, dominant features is that the worms uh, ensure their survival for 10 years and longer in the body by suppressing the immune response. For example, take river blindness, which is a parasitic worm disease. It is uh, spread out through uh, tropical Africa with about 40 million people infected. And here you have uh, worm larvae in the skin amounting to some hundreds per square millimeter. Yet the uh, uh, the immune response is so down-regulated that uh, there is almost no inflammation in the majority of people, and they sometimes don't even know they have the disease. So we know also that there is a spillover of this immune response to other um, uh, immune responses. For example, negative is that uh, some vaccines do not work as well as they should, and this has also been very clearly aligned to this immune uh, suppression and the most of action is uh, more or less uh, well established and the hypothesis now is that this overshooting immune reaction that comes with severe COVID-19 cases might be mitigated uh, because the people harbor worms and have an immunosuppressed general uh, uh, status. If this hypothesis does prove to be true, are there any implications for a possible treatment for coronavirus? Uh, it has long been sought to sort of carve out the beneficial immune or parts of the immune response of a parasite, immunosuppressive mode, uh, and uh, avoid the, the total parasitic infection. But this is very tricky. You have to imagine that the parasite harbors about 10,000 different proteins and uh, even more other molecules that it can play with in order to interact and down-regulate the immune system, uh, not to speak about the of the infection and the locality and all these things. So it's very complicated and so far, uh, except for a few molecules that, uh, for example, have been shown to down-regulate uh, now it becomes very specific call-like receptors, which are sort of part of the immune, uh, innate immune system, also playing a very important role in septic infections, uh, that they can be addressed by small molecules, but they are still in the preclinical development. So we are not yet there, and it would definitely be longer than uh, the perspectives for a COVID-19 vaccine, which seems to be more or less around the corner. OK, so we won't be relying on the worms just yet. Dr. Akim Hurao from Bonn University, thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you very much. And now it's the part of the programme where we pose one of your questions to our science correspondent, Derek Williams. If you inhale SARS-CoV-2, does the number of viruses you inhale make a difference in your symptoms? This is a really interesting question because it touches on a recent comment made by a top American health official that universally masking up might be more effective than a vaccine at protecting us from COVID-19. Um, the idea behind that claim is that although masks don't prevent people from being exposed to the virus entirely, um, by limiting exposure, they could help reduce 
the number of people who develop severe cases of the disease. Um, the theoretical equation is that light exposure leads to more asymptomatic cases. And, and there's some evidence um, to back that idea up from settings like cruise ships and, and meat packing plants where, where people who were required to wear masks during COVID-19 outbreaks on average got less severe forms of the disease. Now, the exact amount of virus that it takes to make someone really sick is a kind of a slippery concept called uh, the infectious dose or, or viral dose. And, and there's no way to really tell for sure whether a higher infectious dose causes more severe symptoms or not, um, at least not, not in humans. That's because if you really want to test the idea, you're going to run into a major ethical problem. You'd have to intentionally infect people with varying amounts of the virus and, and basically wait to see what happens next. Um, but we have carried out studies like this in animals, uh, for example, hamsters, and they do indeed show that there appears to be a correlation between being exposed to more SARS-CoV-2 and disease severity, which is not really a surprise, but of course, um, other factors like, like age and general health also play big roles in outcomes.